the tire went flat my second time in the dirt. So we got it up on the stand. A little bit of stability just in case. Uh, it had a pathetic non-real cotter pin. This is loose. And I frankly don't know what to do from here. One. Two. Two. Three. Four. Welcome to the D.E. Nichols channel. Autobottle.com. Oh, how did I get here? There's no tire. <laughs> well, it went flat on my second ride. Maybe it always had a slow leak, I don't know. Ordered a tire without looking at the wheel. It's 4.6 4 .6 inches in diameter, and I ordered a uh, stock 3.5. At least the rim size is still an 18. Uh, the drum brake actually sits inside of here. It's extremely simple to pull apart. This rolls around inside of that. That's on the wheel. This is set to 8 on each side. This is actually the far left hand side of the bike. And it's got this set piece to set how far it goes as well. And then you got your brake adjustment, which I wish I videoed a bit more because it. Uh, might need to be set at a particular angle to work. So I might have to drive, test, and drive before I have that right. But it's incredibly simple. If you look, this bike was originally all silvery aluminum goodness. It needs to get restored to that. Uh, the last idiot painted it. He showed me pictures of before he painted it. Black all over. Yuck. Drum brake. This corresponds with that, 10 millimeter. This is the rear drum. It looks great. It's got plenty of wear left. So I guess I won't worry about the fact that it's a bit squeaky. Because it's all there. Looks good. Harbor Freight holding me up. It's seen better days. It's been totally trashed. And I, I like what uh, Joe thought of to hang this up. That's pretty cool. Forgot to mention that it's a 21 with the castle nut and it was held on this, by, this pathetic wire that I forgot to take off. And uh, I'm going to get a new cotter pin for it. And it also has these two larger, just in case, cotter pins, you know, to keep you safe. So that's pretty cool. And I almost forgot. It recommends when removing the chain to pull this plastic guard. But really, there's just enough playroom to slide it forward and get it off. So I almost forgot I got to tighten that back up. Okay, this is really cool. I just learned something today. I didn't know that on my dirt bike here that it sort of has a uh, way to reduce the forces and smooth out the power. Oh man, that really sits in there. Okay, that took two hands. But check it out. There's all this reduction of forces going on. And basically, these are all rubberized, so it kind of fits like a clutch. It's not a clutch, but it kind of acts like a clutch where it has some slip, so that as you're beating on your, your bike and hitting it hard, it smooths out how the power actually gets delivered. Might make it easier on the engine as well when you snap the throttle and stuff. So, that's just cool. I, I get it. It makes total sense. It's, it's, it smooths out the action. You can definitely tell as the patterns of threes and twos slide looking across these. It's, it's, it's really awesome engineering. First off, take your friction material. After you've found your holes, we put air in it until we found the holes. We'll recheck with fluid afterwards. Once you've built up a nice friction, pick an appropriate patch. In this case, we have two holes and a patch. 
my grandfather did experiments where he purposely put holes in tires over and over and over. And he said, the less the rubber, the cement, the better. So I actually was too liberal there. And I, I usually go glove free once I actually grab the patch because any contaminants will ruin your results. Pulled it off backwards by the way. Go the other way. And thankfully there's a big hole to kind of direct my efforts to go across both. And you don't want to stop there. And roll it. Exactly. It's called, I, I think it's called stitching it. And then recheck for leaks in case there's another one. Now we checked very thoroughly around the rim. We didn't see any damage on the rim itself that would cause this problem. I think what happened is there was a little tiny hole and then the big ragged hole happened just because of the strength of driving back on a tire that was flat. Normally I don't hit it with glue again, but I saw the corner be a little bit dry. And I just wanted to be sure that all of it sitting yeah, really yeah, well. And really get into it. Uh, good question, man. I don't know. And I work back and forth to make sure I get all the air out. I'm actually already confident that it's already going to be really good. That's a good question. I now, I, I put a lot more friction time on it than I showed until it got really roughed up. And that should be that should be it. Okay, we figured it out. There's two holes that the uh, inner tube can go through. Hole number two matches perfectly with where the hole was. So we need to figure out a way to get rid of this hole because it's going to pop. What I've got going on here. I mean, we have this nice liner to protect, but it probably just wasn't enough. That's what it looks like. So we're thinking maybe put a little plug patch in here to fill the space. Uh, it looks a little small. Okay, so we're feeling a little weak. About one corner popped out. Maybe I shouldn't have put so much pressure on it while it was still drying. Well, I know I shouldn't have. I'm gonna put a patch on a patch. I don't recommend it, but it might work for us. And since the other hole created the problem in the first place, we actually put two patches down to create a cushion against that chafing point. And then this liner that just came with the bike will hold it in place. I mean, that, that's, that's staying in nice. That'll be very good. We left out. I'm sorry. Okay. We're gonna hit both sides since that hole's so big and hope I don't have a really unbalanced tire when I'm done. Not a chance. I messed up. I gave Amazon the wrong address. Uh, that's why I repaired the inner tube. Probably should never, never have done that when I saw, uh, I think, a pretty ragged hole in there. Or maybe if I had a uh, uh, you chosen two small patches for each hole. It would have worked better than choosing one big one hit both at once Because either one if if air got past it would uh, undermine the other hole and make the other one leak, right? So Anyway, yeah rule of the story if you ever move and you hardly ever buy off of Amazon and suddenly you do uh, Don't send it to your old address Because <laughs> otherwise you'll keep Patching your your uh, stuff and spend four times the cost of an inner tube on fix a flat, uh, borrowing some shop time off of another shop, and, uh, and and at least getting videos on how to do patches and stuff. Now, when I came back again with a new inner tube, I 
Joe and I totally unbird everything underneath um, underneath that what would touch the inner tube from the wheel. Deburred it. Uh, took my die grinder with a soft metal brush and cleaned everything. Got perfectly smooth. Never had a problem with inner tube again. Okay. So now I'm checking to make sure there's no t uh, holes. In fact, it's easier to use my camera to do this. than it is to look with my eyes. I want to make sure there's no nails sitting and waiting in there. To repop the rim. Okay, I know I've gone around again because I saw that friction point, so we got it. I already popped the feed earlier. It was dramatic. Do I like to work? Basically like that, working all the way around and on both sides. And then you can take your tire off. Now normally you clamp the opposite direction. As you can see. This can clamp either way, but I like to clamp it in mostly, unless it's a really tiny one. It's an 18 inch, so. And I missed one. Get your hands out of the claws. What are you doing, Buck? Got it. Well, this, some machines don't jump back on you when you go slow, but this tries to go the opposite direction. David, you're into your spokes. Huh? You're into your spokes. You're not on the rim. Oh, thanks. Set right. I'm cheating. This is about the issue. It's easier. The trick is to use the machine for you, not against you. Hook it. Spin it. Normally on a car tire, it's a lot easier. But a car tire, you can never finish it by hand either. So set this. Catch only one side of the room at a time. Push on the opposite end to give yourself some good. And it should come right off. Now you gotta catch both. One trick if you don't catch, when you first set your hook, is you back up and then go forward. But this time I got lucky, it came easy. 
Right now we're pacing around waiting for it to dry because I want to air it, but I don't want it to pop out like the first time when I aired it immediately when it was still wet. So we've double patched the patch and I'm hoping everything sticks this time. Is this the picture of success? Air's going in, bead's gonna set. Not that the bead actually has anything to do with the air being held. This sucker has four patches on its tire. It still leaks. Now it's got fix a flat. And we're getting another can of fix a flat just in case. And I hope it works because I messed up. I'm on the way to ride. The other moral of the story is, is that if you get too excited about a project because you just want to go ride, but you know it's not going to work, rethink your plan. <laughs> I, I was fighting too hard to get the quickest result possible. Uh, even and, and it actually took a long time because it, it wasn't very effective. Uh, either doing the big patch, I've never done that in automotive. In automotive, we always did the plugs that also had a uh, patch uh, on the inside of tires, but this is inner tube. I, I don't have near the inner tube experience. And for simplicity purposes, I only filmed how to put that tire on and off without the inner tube. With the inner tube, it's more complicated. Okay, You have to be really careful to not let that tire uh, inner tube bunch up or you could potentially tear it. You gotta keep it out of the way. You, you've, um, if I remember right, the easiest way to do it is once you get one part, one side of the sidewall in, so the other sidewall is still out, put your inner tube in, uh, get it out of the way, and then roll that one in. Now, while these tires are only 2014s because they, they lived in a very hot, dry, dry, dry desert, it had dried out the rubber. It's, I don't think this, this motorcycle inner, outer tube or outer tire was supposed to be so inflexible. It didn't help that that shop, you know, you can rent some shop, shop space for a short time. Uh, I don't think that shop had, they, they didn't have any good way to lube the tire. The tire was, was brittle and older, even though it was only a 2014 and here we are in 2016. So it made it extremely challenging to pop it over. When I videoed, it happened to go easy, but there's other times where Joe and I at the same time with two different levers were pulling on it, trying to flip it over because it, it was just so dry and smooth that it wouldn't catch on the uh, uh, arm piece that, that sets the bead in. We ended up doing that by hand. This is old tire like that is definitely not the way to go if you're gonna be truly adventure riding way out there because how are you ever gonna patch anything? Uh, you can't, not, not, when, not when you need a sh uh, the resources of a shop to get to that inner tube. So, you know, in the true adventure riding spirit where you could be in the middle of nowhere and be able to keep going, um, old tire, it, it, it just, it's, it's not, it's not going to work for you. Okay. Um, unless you've got a bunch of burly people willing to work on all, on the project all at once, it's, it's just not going to happen. Maybe find a project that gets you back to basics. But regardless, get out there and work on something. Don't make you feel good about yourself. <laughs>